Well, good morning and welcome once again to Word for the Week, our online study series here at Cornerstone Faith Community Church. My name is Pastor Jeremy Heike, and I'm so glad to be with you this morning. Uh, for those of you who are uh, joining us this morning for the first time via a new um, uh, opportunity, a new media to get you here, we now have a podcast that is available through certain um, audio uh, uh, opportunities like Spotify and Pandora and Google uh, Podcasts and so forth. For those of you who are joining us via podcast uh, this morning, welcome. Uh, what we do each week is we are reading uh, a chapter of a book and um, we're just discussing the content of that chapter uh, and, and, and really its application to our lives uh, each and every week. And currently we're working through a book called The Prayer of Agar. Um, which is by a, a gentleman by the name of Jay Payleitner. And uh, the subtitle of this book is Ancient Wisdom for Discovering Your Sweet Spot in Life. Uh, so if you have been with us uh, uh, through from the beginning of Word for the Week uh, and you uh, join us each week uh, via the video presentation, uh, welcome our podcast friends uh, this week. We're so glad to have them with us. And let's dig in then. We are in uh, chapter five of uh, Agar, uh, of, the, of the prayer of Agar. Uh, chapter five is called Agar's Prayer, part one. It's a really a great week to bring new folks in because we're really gonna get into the heart of Agar's prayer this week. Uh, from Proverbs chapter 30, uh, starting at verse seven, uh, we read these words, two things I ask of you, Lord. Do not refuse me before I die, Keep falsehoods and lies far from me. Two things I ask of you, Lord. Do not refuse me before I die. Keep falsehood and lies from me. And this morning, in part one, we're really just going to focus on that falsehood and lies piece. Um, on page 30 of his book, uh, Pay Leitner says, If we drone on and on with a long list of complaints, frustrations, requests, we're going to start adding items we don't really need. Plus... We'll have a hard time tracking God's response. What's he talking about? When we're praying, if we just kind of drone on and on and on and on and on, we lose sight, we lose focus, we lose um, the purpose of the conversation in the first place with God. And so we end up having this potential for losing track of where we are with God, what our, what our purpose was to go before him in the first place. And, uh, and then he says this, for, sh for sure, when you pray, God has already heard your prayer and formulated his loving and perfect response. God absolutely has a loving and perfect response for all of our prayers, um, as silly as they may seem. Um, and, you know, some people, you might hear somebody saying, um, you know, I really um, I really don't like shopping at this grocery store. I, I feel like I'm not getting a good deal. And so I've been praying, asking God to show me, like, where is a better grocery store for me? Now, that might seem seems silly to some of us, but I really truly believe that God has a perfect answer for everything we ask him. And that might be uh, in this particular case about a grocery store. Hey, stop fretting over these silly little things, right? Uh, make it work. <laughs> I don't know what the answers might be, but God certainly has a certain perfect answer for everything that we ask him. Um, J.P. Leitner mentions that here in Agar's prayer, he addresses sort of the top two issues or weaknesses that Agar has uh, or that he sees. And he, he basically says, I'm going to focus on these two things with you, God. Of course, that being the falsehood and lies we're talking about today. And then he doesn't want to fall far away from God. So as we talk about these falsehood and lies, Payleitner sort of led us to the idea of brokenness. How do we come before God to talk to him to have a conversation with him, to learn from him and hear from him about our brokenness. Well, when I think of brokenness, obviously I can't help but think of sin. And so what I wanted to sort of focus on today is, is sort of two different types of prayer that I think are probably among the most common types of prayer that we see uh, the church praying for on a regular basis. The first type of prayer is what I'm going to call needs-based prayer, needs-based prayer. And so you've probably heard um, in your life that there are these sort of, um, uh, uh, these, um, I think it's uh, an anagram, um, 
the acronym. That's what I'm talking. An acronym that uh, that people use for prayer. And so the the most common one is kind of a needs based acronym, uh, which is very simply ACTS or A C T S. The A stands for ask. So the first thing you need to do when you go to God is ask. Go ahead and ask Him for whatever it is that's on your mind. Uh, the second is confess. We don't want to forget about confessing sin when we're speaking with God every single time we're speaking with him. So we ask, we confess. T is thank or, or thankfulness. We share our thankfulness with him. We thank him for everything he has done for us. And then S is submit or, or, or submission. We submit to his will. Now the S part is the hardest part of that, I think. It's pretty easy, I think, to go and ask God for something. Uh, it is, at least it should be easy for us to confess the things that we've done before him, knowing that he is loving and righteous and he has our best interests at heart. And then to thank him, that should be easy. But then the submission part, submitting to his will. Now, that doesn't necessarily always mean submitting to getting the answer you want, right? It might mean submitting to the answer that you were hoping he wouldn't give you. The more difficult answer, the harder answer, you know. So we ask, confess, thank, submit. But that has to do, I think, mostly with needs. If we think about when we would be praying in this way, we'd be praying because we're asking God to provide us something or to give us something or to allow us to do something or to help us to do something. What if we're going to God in prayer not for a need? What if it's for our sinfulness? Which, of course, we're desperately in need when we have sin. We're in need of him. But what if we're going with the specific pur purpose of um, sharing our brokenness with him and, and, and asking him to sort of heal us, heal us from our sin, forgive us from our sins, heal us of our brokenness. And so uh, there's an acronym that I'd like to, to share with you for, for this. Um, and, and this is something that I've sort of developed over time. Um, and I think it really works. Uh, you could always reply back to me and let me know whether you think it works or not. But when it comes to speaking with God about my sin and my brokenness, I like to use the acronym HEAL, H-E-A-L. And that H stands for honor. Um, when I come with my brokenness, um, what I find I personally have a desire most for is to bring him honor. I recognize that my brokenness does not bring honor to God. And so what I feel like is most desperately needed when I come to God to talk to him about my sin and my brokenness is for me to honor him. And so I start with that. I want to honor him first. I want to glorify him first because the reality is we're coming to this conversation. He and I are having this conversation because I haven't honored him. I've lifted myself above him uh, in one way or another with my sinfulness. So H is for honor. The E in heal is for exhortation. Now, normally exhortation, we think about us speaking to someone else, exhorting someone. Um, and, and, and what does exhortation really mean? Well, it sort of means teaching, rebuking, um, bringing, shedding light on, um, sharing the fact that you've done something wrong. Now, um, or, or something should be done differently or whatever the case might be. So how do we exhort ourselves? I have to speak this way to myself a lot. I have to remind myself that I have not done what I'm supposed to do. It's one thing for God's word to remind me of that, but then I have to sort of own that, take that on and remind myself, hey, you need to do better. God wants more from you. God wants better from you. He doesn't demand perfection from you, but he demands that you would give him more than this. And so I have to speak a word of exhortation to myself. And I'll be honest, a lot of times I do that with the words of scripture. I let scripture exhort me in those moments. The A in heal stands for absolution. There is no point in me coming and, and making this sort of confession. By the way, that exhortation part where I'm sort of reminding myself what I've done wrong it always leads me into the confession part. It, 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 you can't recognize that you're telling yourself, hey, stop doing this without saying, you know, that's I, I shouldn't be doing that. Confessing that as well. So the A is the absolution. And what's the point in me coming, asking for healing from my sin and brokenness, right? Uh, if I'm not going to remind myself, if I'm not going to let God's word remind me 
of God's forgiveness for me. And so I always try to speak some words of absolution to myself. As far as the east is from the west, so far has God removed his sin from, or his, his, uh, removed my sin from me. Uh, or um, this is the good news of the gospel that for all of those who trust and believe in God's name, there is forgiveness, there is healing. Um, you know, some kind of absolution word like that. Think about absolution as far as what we do in church. When we have a time of confession, uh, confessional prayer, and then the pastor usually says, so brothers and sisters, let me remind you that Jesus Christ died for your sins. He has forgiven you all of your sins, right? Um, that word of absolution is so important. And then uh, the final piece in this acronym, the L, H-E-A-L, heal. The L simply just stands for love. I desperately need to remind myself that when I am in conversation with God, I need to allow time for love to happen in that relationship. I need to love him and he needs to love me. He, he wants to love me. He desires to love me. I need him to love me. And so I need to love him and I need him to love me. And, and so I need to allow room for that. And sometimes, a lot of times, that doesn't happen with words. That happens with me just being in his presence, sitting with him, feeling his presence with me, um, letting my mind sort of be moved by him and his spirit to think about all the ways in which he has loved me. And I will confess there's almost never a time where I don't end up at John 3.16 and reminding myself uh, that I am whosoever. Uh, God has created me to be whosoever that believeth in him. And so um, I, 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 I have to have opportunities to remind myself of God's love for me and to remind myself of my desire to love him. And so um, these two different acronyms, I'll remind you of them in case you're trying to write them down. A um, ACTS is the first one, <clears throat> which has to do mostly with needs. Ask, confess, thank, and submit, right? Ask, confess, confess, thank, and submit. But then on the other hand, when we're praying about our sinfulness, our brokenness, here's heal, honor, exhortation, absolution, and love. So J. Payleitner sort of wraps up this chapter with these great words. He says, part one of Agar's prayer is a sincere brokenness before the creator of the universe. Somehow he knows the destructive consequences of falsehood and lies. He recognizes that Satan, even though he is a master deceiver, can't stand up to virtue and integrity. Agar wants to be on the winning team that comes from hearing truth, discerning truth, and speaking truth. I want to be on the winning team and I believe you do too that comes that is built together that comes from the 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 acts the virtue of learning speaking living knowing the truth of God and that truth for our brokenness that there is no mountain too high there is no ocean too deep there is no river too wide that can separate us from the love of God our Father in Christ Jesus our Lord and there is no angel or demon, no power, no prince, no ruler, no authority, not in heaven or on earth or under the earth that can separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. And so when we come and honor him and, and we, we exhort ourselves to live a, a more godly, Christ-like life, and we remind ourselves of the absolution, the, the forgiveness of our sins, and then we, uh, we commit to loving him more nearly and dearly each and every day, that's when that healing happens for our brokenness. And so when Agar prayed, he said that you would that God would keep falsehood and lies far from him. That's where healing begins. When the falsehood and when the falsehoods and lies are kept far from us. When we know the truth of God's word, we are where we're well grounded in the truth of God's word, and when we are well grounded in a prayer life that seeks to be honoring of him that seeks to confess our sin, that can, seeks to live differently, and that seeks to just love him. I hope you guys have a great week this week. 
Uh, we'll look forward to being with you again next week for this uh, series word for the week. We will be in chapter six of the prayer of Agar. Uh, until then, I uh, hope you just guys just have a great week and uh, hope to see you very soon.